So we're now going to look at sections 2.3 and 2.4 at measures of location and box plots. So let's first look at uh, percentiles. So if we're looking at the 80th percentile, uh, what we're really looking at is where is the cutoff that we have the lower end has 80% and the upper end has that 20%. So whenever we talk about percentiles, we're saying the cutoff for the bottom end. So that's the same as saying the top 20% or the bottom 80%. And we'll typically denote that with a P sub 80, uh, so percent uh, 80th percentile. Uh, we can also look at uh, quartiles. So a Q1 is what we call the first quartile here. And that's equal to the 25th percentile. Okay, so first quartile. Q2 is going to be the 50th percentile, which is the second quartile here. And so on, Q3 is the 75th percentile, which is going to be the third quartile. And so if we do a little graph here, uh, this breaks up our data into four equal portions, each one representing 25% there. So quarters, hence the phrase quarters there. Okay. So we're going to typically want to focus on the middle 50% here. So uh, if we talk about our minimum, our maximum, and then our quartiles here, from one end to the other, so the max minus the minimum, uh, we call that the range. But we want to focus where that middle 50% is. So if we find out the range of those middle quartiles, we call that the IQR, the inner quartile range, which is Q3 minus Q1. And if we want to identify any outliers, so values that are extremely high or extremely low in this case here, Uh, what we're going to want to do is we're going to take that uh, upper fence, which is Q3 plus 1.5 times the IQR. And then the lower fence would be the same thing, but on the lower end, Q1 minus that 1.5 times IQR. So that uh, the inner quartile range, whatever that middle 50% is, we're going to use that with and then half of it again. That's where that 1.5 comes from. So it's about one and a half of that. And that really has to do uh, later on when we talk about uh, standard deviations and z-scores where two z-scores or beyond two standard deviations ends up being unusual cases. So they end up being fairly uh, similar values there. But so here's some, uh, some formulas. Uh, we'll look at some examples here before we get too technical on this. Okay, so let's first find the five number summary. Uh, and let's do a box plot here. So we have some data values of um, uh, 13 real estate prices, so some real estate values, and we want to find out what uh, this five number summary and box plot is. So first things first is let's go ahead and rank our data. So we're going to go ahead and put this from low to high. So I'm just going to go ahead and rewrite all of the values going from the smallest all the way up to the largest. And I'm going to underline them so I keep track that I already wrote it. I'm going to go all the way through in this case here. Okay. And since we have 13 of these values here, so the number of uh, data values here are going to be odd. That means we get off a little easy and we actually have a middle value here. So if we look at that middle value of the four, uh, 488,800 here, that's our middle value. That's going to be our quartile 2 in this case. Okay. Now, what we want to do is we're going to want to find the middle value for the first half of the data. So we're going to find the middle value of this first half here. Now, since there's an even amount, we don't have a middle value. So we're going to want to get the average of the middle two, so the midpoint there. So Q1 is going to be in between those. And if you recall, we could just add and divide by two. So that's going to give us our first quartile. 
Similarly, we're going to want to do this for the second half of the data. We're going to want to have the middle value, and we're going to have to get an average or the midpoint for those two. And our third quartile is going to be uh, 649,000. Okay. And let's also focus on this middle 50%. Where does that fall in? So let's calculate that IQR here, which is Q3 minus Q1. So our inner quartile range is going to be about 340,250. Okay. Let's look for our upper fence to see if we have any outliers. And our upper fence is going to be Q3 plus one and a half times the inner quartile range. So let's go ahead and just plug that in here. So we get our Q3. We're going to add one and a half times the IQR. And this is going to be our upper fence. This is our cutoff for any outliers on the upper end. Anything beyond this, we're going to consider that it's kind of uh, an unusual case or rare here. Extremely high. And we're going to do the same thing on the lower end. Q1 minus this time 1.5 times the IQR. And if we plug that in, we're going to go ahead and get our lower fence. It's negative 201,625. Now, if we're talking real estate values, you're not going to have a property that's valued at negative. But this is completely a mathematical computation. So in context, it might not have any meaning, but this is actually the lower fence. So we could see from here that that uh, 5.5 million is going to be an outlier. Okay. Now, this was probably obvious that that number st stood out. Maybe the one that wasn't as obvious, it was that 1,095,000 there, right? That 1,095,000. Uh, uh, and so this tells us that we're within that upper fence. So that guy, although it's pretty high, it's not considered an actual outlier. So let's write our five number summary which is our minimum, our three quartiles, and then our maximum. So there's your minimum value, your lowest, your Q1, your Q2, and your Q3, and there is our max value. Okay, and let's go ahead and plot this. So I'm going to plot my second quartile here, and then I'm going to plot my Q1 and my Q3, and I'm going to try to do them relatively uh, uh, proportional to each other there. There's my minimum, and then there's my maximum. And again, my maximum is probably way larger. I should have probably put it out a little bit more, but uh, I'm putting it just enough so we kind of notice that it, it does stick out a bit. And the way we do a box plot is we're going to go ahead and mark the quartiles, and then we're just going to make a box around those values. There we go. So that's our box, and then we're going to want to do the whisker. So the whisker goes from the minimum to the maximum, and we're going to go ahead and connect those. So there's our box plot, and then there's the whiskers that connect to it. And we could see that uh, since that right whisker is very long, that uh, that maximum is an outlier. Uh, sometimes textbooks want to identify that, and they want to make sure that we uh, note that it's an outlier when we have a graph. So... What we will do here is we'll make a modified box plot with the outlier noted. So we're still going to go ahead and do the box with the quartiles. We'll go ahead and plot the minimum there and connect that whisker. But where the outlier is, we're going to go ahead and denote that with an asterisk, so a little star there. And then we're going to go ahead and plot the next highest value that is not an outlier. which is going to be that uh, 1,095,000. So we're going to go ahead and mark that, and we're going to make our whisker to that value. And so this is um, uh, a modified box plot here, and it denotes the outlier. And so this makes it just a lot more, again, aesthetically pleasing. When we first see it, the outlier is denoted, and we know there's an extreme value there. So let's look at some percentiles here. And we have some raw data, and we want to find a 70th percentile. And so here's a formula. 
where we have our uh, i is equal to k over uh, 100 and plus 1, where i is our index. It's the ith value of our ranked data here. k is a percentile, and then we have our number of uh, data values here. So let's see how that works out. So if I want the 70th percentile, my i of uh, is going to equal to 70 over 100, because that's the 70th percentile that I want. If you recall, percent is out of 100. And then we have 29 values, and I'm going to add one more to that. So my n is 29. We're going to add one more. So there's 0 0.7 times uh, n plus 1. So we don't really have to depend on the formula too much, just if you want the 70th percentile, that's 0.70, and then multiply it by one more than your data, uh, uh, than your sample size there. And that gives us 21. So then we're going to go ahead and get the 21st place value. So if we count uh, 1 starting at 18, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, etc., all the way down, this is going to be the 21st value that we have. And so that 21st data value is going to give us 64. OK, let's look at the 83rd percentile. And again, we're going to simplify this. We're just going to use 0.83 times one more than our sample size times 30. And this gives us a decimal value, so the 24th point ninth place. That's what that I tells us. It's the, uh, the index. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to take an average from the 24th and the 25th value. So let's note those. There's the 24th and 25th values, so 71 and 72. And we're going to take an average of that. And this one's fairly easy to see that it's going to be 71.5. But if we need to, get the mid-range uh, there, and that's going to give us 71.5. So that gives us the 83rd percentile. Let's interpret uh, what this actually means. So if we want the 83rd percentile, that means we're looking for the cutoff where we have the bottom 83%, and that cutoff is a score of... Uh, 71.5, or uh, an age, I'm sorry, of 71.5. Okay, let's look at one more example here. Let's look at percentile. So working backwards here. So the percentile, here's our formula, where x is going to denote the data values below, and then y is going to be the number of data values, so if a value occurs twice or three times, and n is going to be the total data here. Okay, so let's first start off with our uh, finding the percentile for 58. So 58 is here, so what we're going to want to do is count how many data values are below it. So the data values uh, below 58, that's our x. It's going to be 18. So there's 18 values that are below it. And again, these have to be already assorted in, um, in ascending order here. Now, why is the number of times that 58 appears? It only appears one time, so it's only going to just give us uh, 1 in this case. And we're going to go ahead and just plug this in. So we have 18 plus 0.5 times 1, and we're going to divide that by uh, 29, which is our total data values here. Okay. And then we multiply it by 100 to get that percentile there. Okay, so 18.5, and we're going to end up with 63.8 uh, in this case here. Okay, let's try another example here. Or, uh, again, we, we, def we do want to round this guy up here. We should probably put 64th percentile here. Typically, when we uh, present uh, uh, percentages, usually we round to the nearest percent. All 
right, so let's try this one, percentile for 25. So the data values below, that's going to be 3, so our x is 3 in this case. And I only have one value of 25, so we're going to go ahead and go 3 plus 0.5, that's going to give us that 3.5, and divided by 29. So this one gives us the 12th percentile.